You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to tradeking.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Trade King LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Trade King Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right. So last week we looked at just flat out buying long calls in an underlying uh, that had very low volatility. That underlying was Pfizer. We're going to look at that trade today. Not much has changed, but and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But the strategy that we're going to talk about today is a back spread with calls on one of the biggest stocks in the news, a recent IPO in Snap Incorporated, symbol S-N-A-P. So if you have the options playbook at home and you want to follow along, please turn to page 84 to look at the strategy of a backspread with calls. And as always, if you do not have a version of the options playbook, you can go to optionsplaybook.com, look under the strategy tab, you will find that strategy there. And lastly, if you have the Kindle version of the Options Playbook, just look for the play in the table of contents. In that section, there will be a link directly to that strategy. Okay, so let's sum up the trade from last week. I just currently pulled up a quote on Pfizer, symbol PFE, and today is... Thursday, March 30th, the market is open. It's right around 10 o'clock. And I see with Pfizer, uh, this, the stock really didn't do too much as of late. So we currently have Pfizer down just a little bit from when, when we put on the call. So not much has changed. We went out and looked at a longer term option in the money and a even longer term option out of the money uh, on both of those scenarios. Uh, the stock was trading at 34.38 when we put on the trade. Uh, the two option contracts that, that we put on, we bought a April 21st 33 strike call that was trading for $1.58. And then we also looked at the May 19th expiration, and we went a little bit out of the money and looked at the 35 strike call, and that was trading for 53 cents on the ask. And so right now we see the underlying, if we get a quote on it, it just hasn't moved at all. Uh, we currently have Pfizer trading today at... 3441 it's only up it's up 7 cents on the day and there just hasn't been much movement over the week still looking through for the breakout to the upside according to Michael Kahn from the midday market call over there at the on the Trade King Webex that we do every every Tuesday so we'll just stay the course on Pfizer I, I don't know if we would uh uh, get out of the trade at this point in time. Uh, next week, if nothing has happened, we would definitely get out of the trade and salvage what we can. And if not, you know, uh, if we get the breakout to the upside, then we'll look at that also. Okay, so that's enough for last week's trade. Let's get into this week's trade. I'm kind of excited to talk about backspread with calls. Uh, I like it on underlyings that just have a lot of volatility for no real reason. Um, uh, Snap is a great example of that. It's an IPO, and people are still trying to figure out 
exactly what the valuation is on Snap. And for those of you that don't know, it's an app that's uh, referred to as Snapchat. The name of the company is Snap Inc. It's kind of considered a, a camera company more than than anything, but it's really just a, a fancy app uh, for people to be able to share what they're doing out in the, in the real world. So Snap came public uh, not that long ago. The IPO was priced around $17. It came public at about $21, went straight to $27, went straight back down to $21. It is now trading at $22.46. So there is volatility in the marketplace. They haven't announced earnings. If I look at the implied volatility of these options uh the nearest term option which uh, i well actually let's just look at the nearest monthly expiration option contract which is the april 21st expiration 22 days out that's trading at about a 60 percent implied volatility so we have some ball bottom line is and they're all over the board if you look at even going all the way out to may which is about 50 days out we actually see a increase in volatility we see that trading at about 69 percent implied volatility on the at the money option contract so there's the, they're, they're still looking for price discovery in the options, in the stock, uh, waiting for that all-important first earnings to be announced. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a strategy where we're e expecting the market to move more than the market pit place is implying. In other words, I think some major news can come out. We finally got some analyst uh, news just the other day. Most of them got upgraded. The stock ran up a little bit, but now it came back down again. So I think that uh, we're this option strategy in particular is really looking for more volatility than less. And it would be similar to doing a long straddle, except for in the long straddle, you're paying for the premium up front. You're basically buying an at-the-money call and an at-the-money put, looking for a very large move in implied volatility. The back spread with calls is it's going to take a direction. If you do it with calls, you're going to be bullish on the market. You do it with puts, you're going to be bearish on the marketplace. And as always on Options Playbook Radio, nothing's meant to be a recommendation. We're just sitting here to trying to learn. So you can pick whichever direction you want to, want to go and apply this strategy. I just flipped a coin, and we're going to go with calls in this scenario just to make life simple. And it's a fairly advanced strategy. It's also known as a ratio spread, which means that we are going to be selling one option contract with the intention of bringing in enough credit to pay for two other option contracts. So we're selling the expensive option and buying the cheaper option. And we're looking for a big move either to the upside or to the downside. Okay. So if we look at uh, the strategy, I'm going to stick in, in the, the monthly expiration, which is 22 days out, the April 21st expiration. Not quite sure when earnings would be. I don't think earnings would be announced by then. I had trolled the internet to try to find out if there were any hints as to when it will be. Uh, the investor services site on Snap definitely didn't have it posted, and it's not coming up on our, our search yet inside the Trade King platform, so I don't think they've officially announced when they're going to be announcing earnings. But uh, we're looking for a big move by April 21st, and how big of a move, you might say, that we want to look for? Well, uh, the expected move, once again, if we're going to set up the strategy, the first thing we want to do is look at the most at-the-money strike. So the stock is at 22.42. We're going to look at the 22.50 strike call and put. So the long straddle right now, uh, if we look at buying the 2250 call and buying the 2250 put, that gives us an idea of what the marketplace expects a move could be by that expiration. And if we do that, we see that uh, both options are trading fairly close to a dollar thirty-five. We're going to call it a two dollars and seventy cents is the expected move. Okay. So that's what the marketplace is implying. By doing this strategy, we're saying, well, I think the marketplace is wrong. I think it can move more than the expected move. Basically, you can look at the expected move as the line in the sand. In the, in the betting world, if you were betting on sports, you would call this the over under like on a football game if the uh if, if it's an nfl game and you think that the total point scored for the game will be uh 42 that'll be the line in the sand you either think it's going to go over or you think it's going to go 
under. And that's the way we're going to look at this trade. If we're looking at a back spread with calls, <clears throat> we're expecting the market to move more than $2.70 by the 22 day period with it by April 21st. Okay. So the thing I like the most about the back spread is that we're going to try to accomplish this for a net credit to the account. And we're going to be able to accomplish it, but that's our whole goal with it. That means that if it goes up, we have unlimited upside potential as the market goes up because we're going to be using calls on this end. On the downside, we have risk down to the strike that we're selling, but if it goes down and beyond that, we're going to bring in a small credit, and basically we're going to have a potential for a very small profit if we're dead wrong and the market tanks and basically goes down below its IPO price of 17. We would still be profitable on this trade and be wrong about where we think the underlying market would go. Now, where we have the most risk is if Snap just does absolutely nothing. If it stays right at 2241 where the market is at right now and it doesn't move anywhere over the next 22 days, that is where our maximum risk will be. And that maximum risk is equated as uh, the width between the strikes. Okay, so let's set it up and I'll give you the hard numbers uh, once we get it all set up and we got some prices that are involved here. So if I look at, uh, once again, the April 21st expiration, April 21st, 2017, 22 days away, we currently have Snap trading at 22.41. It is Thursday, March 30th, and the market is open. So if I look at the quote on the strategy, here's what we're, we're, we're doing. We're going to pick an in-the-money option contract and sell that and hopefully pay for two more at-the-money option contracts. So in this instance, we're going to sell the SNAP April 21st expiration 20 strike call. We're going to sell that one time. And then we're going to buy two April 21st, 2250 calls. And we're going to be able to do this entire trade for a net credit of 20 cents to the account. So we're going to be selling an option contract right around uh, $2.80. 80 cents, which would be the midpoint, and we're going to use those proceeds to buy two option contracts that are trading about a dollar 30. Now, this is the midpoint. You can't always get fills right at the midpoint, and don't forget to add in commissions. And once again, these are not meant to be recommendations. But when we talk about options playbook radio, what we're looking at is when are good times to do these different strategies? A lot of people ask, well, what's your favorite strategy? Well, I don't know. I, I need a specific situation, and then I can tell you my favorite strategy for that situation. And, and an example of a, a, a hot IPO that's in the news, it's still got some price discovery going on. It's volatile. People don't even really know if, you know, what the earnings are. We haven't had an earnings report, a, a public earnings report about the, this underlying. So I'm expecting more volatility than less. This is a great scenario to, to go on and, and take a chance with a back spread. Now, realize... The expected move is there for a reason. The market, you're, you're, you're saying that the, the marketplace thinks this thing can only move $2.70. And that's to the upside or the downside. Remember, expected move never has any regard to direction. So uh, the marketplace usually knows more than, than, than one individual, uh, at least. But that's what we're, we're, we're playing against. And that's what we're saying. So in this strategy, we have a $2.50 wide spread. We're bringing in a net credit of 20 cents. That means our total risk is $2.50 minus 20, which means we have $2.30 of risk. Now, where does that risk happen? That happens at expiration if the underlying is pegged exactly on the long strike that we're buying, the 2250 strike. So in other words, if Snapple does not move at all, we could lose $2.30. Now, 
as expiration approaches, that's where our risk comes in. If we get out earlier, like even a week before that expiration date, that max risk uh, adjusts immensely, especially if some of the volatility stays in that option contract. Because the bottom line is you are long to at the money options. So this is a strategy that you don't expect to make money all the time. But when you do, you can knock it out of the park because you have unlimited upside. And that is because we are short one call and long two calls. So you really are hoping that that stock is going to go up at least the width of the strike. So you're hoping that it's going to go above 25 or it's going to go below 20. All right, that's what you're going to what what you think it's going to do. And if it doesn't quite get there, you want it to at least get close to one of those and not stay in the the middle strike uh, stay in that area. And so here comes another name for a backspread with call. Some people will call it a pay later call because we're putting this entire trade on for a 20 cent net credit to the account. But if we are completely stupid about the trade and ride it all the way to expiration and let it expire right at 2250 without getting out of the trade earlier, um, then we could lose $2.30, which basically means you're paying later for your call ops and you're not paying for it up front. But I, I do like this strategy in this scenario, and I like it in stocks where you think volatility you think will continue, but it's not necessarily because of a specific event. And uh, that's when I think the timing is right. So that's going to be it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. The strategy for the week was backspread with calls. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer about the program, you can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash trade king and look for our special tab for options playbook radio you can also send me questions directly at the options guy at tradeking.com and as always you can connect with me via the trade king trader network and my blog called the options guy thanks for listening and we'll be back at the same time same place next week until then may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out the options playbook was brought to you by trade king group Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to TradeKing.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through TradeKing LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.